This session we'll be praying for um, infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is prayer for fresh fire and power. Prayer for fresh fire and power. But before we go into that session, I'll just quickly um, talk and ask us, how many different types of prayers do we have? That's the question. Or expression of prayers. We can call expression of prayers. How many? And then the, again, the second question is, how many of those expressions of prayers do we, does the church as a whole, as a body, do? If you think about it, how many of those expressions do we engage in as a church? Uh, basically, we only engage in, in two. One, which is the first one, is warfare prayers. Uh, every church is about warfare. The second one is prayer of, uh, of, of, of need, mm -hmm. supplication, uh, um, give me this, give me that. But you see, those that carry power, that carry fire, they do a different kind of prayer. And that is what we call prayer of edification. Prayer of edification. And that is why I said we are not just going to pray because it's necessary for us to pray, but we are going to talk about prayer. And when we are talking about prayer of edification, what do you understand by the word edification? Or why is edification important in the life of a believer, in the life of a Christian, in the life of a prayer warrior, in the life of a vanguard prayer member? Why? Or let's start from, do you understand the word edification or edify? Okay, what does it mean? Somebody wants to help me. There is no time, guys. Okay. Because of what time. So what is edification? It simply means to instruct and improve, especially in moral and religious knowledge. That is basic uh, dictionary meaning for edify or edification. But when you look at Vine, Vine is one of the uh, theologians that wrote about Bible, that write dictionaries of Bible. So Vine defined it as the promise of spiritual growth and development of character of believers. Can I repeat that so that you can get it? Vines, V-I-N-E-S. If you don't have a Bible dictionary, you are not ready to grow yet because you need dictionary. Vine is one of the people that write dictionary of the Bible. Expository so, dictionary. expository dictionary, which helps us to understand Bible better. Okay? It says the promotion of spiritual growth and development of character of believers. By what? By one, sorry, teaching or by example. Subjection, suggestion such as spiritual progress as a result of patient labor. So prayer of edification is a prayer of patient labor. Amen. Mm -hmm. An example from the life of our Lord Jesus Christ is taken from the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 12 to 14. Please in your own time read it. I'm meant to lead a prayer, but I just don't, don't want to, us to go into prayer without having understanding. That's why I'm doing this. Okay? So, if you read Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to 14, you will see what Jesus did there, and that is uh, education. Jesus was not praying only about the apostles, but he was praying about the choice. How to choose them, everything is in prayer. Number two, he was not praying just to hear God. He has fellowship with Father every time. Kununa, through long period of prayer, is a must for a strong spirit to be birthed. Fellowship, God, through period of prayers. Brethren, not 10-minute prayer we're talking about here. No 5-minute prayer. Fellowship upon fellowship of prayer. That is when you start hearing God. That is when God actually starts talking to you. And I call the next slide, I call it becoming a vessel. We need to know and learn about praying for edification if we be strong in the spirit. If we are to be strong in the spirit, you need to understand 
prayer of edification. And you cannot be, we can't lead the prayer of power and fire, or fire and power, without you edifying yourself, without you having fellowship. That's what it means, simply means. Fellowship with God, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Often, continually, either at work, at home, there is no time that you are not fellowshipping. When I was growing up, uh, the house that I was living in Oketuno, we had uh, a, a, a man that was born again there. He's, he's, a, he's a bishop now. If I mention his name, Baba, we know him very well. Whenever he's washing, doing his washing, washing his own shirt, clothing and like that, you will always hear him shabak in the spirit. And we always laugh. We don't know what it means then. And he doesn't even bother to train us or teach us. He will just smile at us and you don't understand. Whenever he's washing his father's car, you will always hear him. Sh- so everything he's doing is praying in the spirit. He's praying in the spirit. He's praying in the spirit. And he's not praying because we can be praying by our lips and our heart is far from God. He's connecting with God. In fact, you will see transformation in his body. We love the way he looks. But he doesn't, I don't know if he has the patient. If you called us around and tell us what he's doing, I'm, I'm sure that we would have listened. But we just laugh and say, ah, oh, Uncle K, Uncle K, we'll just be doing that. And that is how we need to be. We are going too far away from God as a prayer vanguard, as a team. And what do I mean by that? When was the last time that somebody said, a Pastor, when we are having our vigil, this is the voice of God. This is what God said concerning the church. I don't know what it means, but this is what we hear. You can only be able to hear him if you put your ear on his heartbeat. And that is through kononia, which is, means fellowship. Constant fellowship. You are getting infinite. So prayer for education is creating time for communion without any request than to be with God. You are not going there with bucket list of need. You are not going there with bucket list of people you want him to kill. Kill my enemy, a generational enemy, kill them. No, you are not going there. You are going there to say, I want to know you more. I want to have more of you inside of me. I am tired of being a mediocre Christian. I want something in me to be different. I want to be able to hear when you speak and have the confidence to say that this is what I hear God saying. I want to have dreams. I want to have vision that I'll be able to go to pastor and say, concerning the church, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this. This is what I saw. Or this is what I received. And this is where people like our Father in the Lord, uh, Reverend Amoso, people like our Daddy in the Lord, uh, 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 Daddy E.A. Adeboye have been always in constant fellowship with God. And when you are in constant fellowship with God, one thing that will happen, let me tell you, when you speak, you will hear. Mm. And then you are not just going to hear. You are going to hear in timeline. What's the meaning of timeline? There and there. I was talking to one of our pastor's friend, family friend, and he said, Pastor, I, I changed my prayer now. I said, why? He said, God said something to me on, mon- on Monday. I hear him on Wednesday. Three days delay. You don't understand. God, so when he now here on Wednesday, I said, Father, I'm going to go to fellowship and do what you ask you. And God said, I've already spoken to you since Monday. So you are just hearing now today. So there has been a delay in communication. That is why sometimes the action would have happened before we say, ah, and I saw that, you know. Because you are not hearing in timeline. Mm. Like I'm talking now, you are hearing me. People that will hear this recording are not hearing it in timeline. They are hearing the recording of today. Maybe on Sunday, maybe on Monday, maybe when I have the time to post it. So that is no more timeline. You are hearing me. one by, And that is why you come by and say, ah, and I saw that thing. I saw that that woman died. The reason why you are just seeing it is because he has told you. But because you are not properly connected to his heartbeat, you are a time delay. There's a time delay. You understand time delay? Uh-huh. There's a time delay. When you are traveling and you are using sat 
there's a five minute time delay. So when Sat Nights is telling you you are doing 70, you need to check your clock because you might actually be doing 75 because there's a five minute time delay from the satellite. Uh, downloading to your sat nav there's five minutes i've targeted it i've tried it i've used different sat nav and i see that there's a time delay and the is is about four minutes i'm oh, sorry the fastest is four minutes normally it's about five six minutes delay does that make sense mm -hmm. god spoke on monday the brother was receiving on wednesday look at that monday tuesday and then before receiving on wednesday and god said i've already spoken since monday you are just receiving now can that be your prayer? That I want to hear you in timeline. Now, now, now. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, that is why the songs like, I want to be where you are. You understand that kind of song? Yeah. That is that where that kind of song, that inspiration comes from. It's not from everything a double double. No, no, no. That is, I really want to be where you are. Where you are every step of the way. Okay. There's no point in us loading ourselves with prayer. If we are not going to understand what it means. There are two characteristics of prayer of education. Edification. Number one is worship. Worship. Two characteristics that, that you will see in the life of somebody that is understanding or praying the prayer of edification. To show profound religious devotion and respect to adore or venerate God or any person or thing. That is what it means. What does that mean? John chapter 4, verse 24. God is spirit. And those who worship God must be led by the spirit to worship him according to the truth. So which means every now, every day, every hour, every minute, you must be in spirit. You mustn't do anything in flesh. Again, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20 says, Speak to one another. With the words of psalm, hymns, and sacred songs. Singing hymns and psalms to the Lord with praise in your heart. In the name of our Lord Jesus, and always give thanks for everything, God the Father. Always. It's not because, ah, I'm tired today, I'm at work, and because of that, I'm not in spirit. No, you have to be. You have to be. You have to be in constant fellowship with him. Constant, those are the people that they will give secret things. He says, Secret things belong to who? Our God. So, he will then start giving you few of those secret things, and then you will hear him in timeline. It's not that when it has happened, I say, Ah, Muderio. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16 says, Do not let yourself be led away from the Lord to worship and serve other gods. And that is what is happening to us in this generation. We are being led away from God to serve money. We are being led away to, uh, from God to go and serve party, to serve people. Some of us, we don't want to go to that party, but because our sister is pressurizing, say, if I don't go now, it's going to start calling me names. So because of that, you've abandoned God and you are serving people at the party. You see, when you, you cannot serve God, at the same time serve human. You have to make a choice. You have to go in time to just tell them, sorry, I can't come. I have one fellowship. A brother was designing my website for me. And all of a sudden, we were talking on WhatsApp. And all of a sudden, I, I couldn't hear him anymore on the WhatsApp. I didn't call because our communication is on WhatsApp. So I, I continued to just continue. After about two hours, he come back and said, Baba, I just have to go and pray. This guy give to prayer. He's, he's been to he's been with us uh, that that Sunday, Jeremy, Jeremy Johnson. He said, "Baba, I just have to go and pray." I just realized that it's time for my. So if I have to answer you, I know that you are going to uh, tie me down, and I won't be able to pray. I have to just go and pray. That guy gave to prayers, and that is why constantly he could hear God, what God is saying. He will look at you once and say, "This is what I receive concerning you." Constantly in prayer. Number two is speaking in tongues. Tongues is a way in which we edify or strengthen ourselves. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. First Corinthians 14, 2. It says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. 
For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. In what? In the spirit. So we cannot be a carrier of fire and power except we have this understanding on how to pray. And when you receive it, what do you want to receive it for? God is generous, but is not a man that wastes resources. God never wastes resources. If he gave you, for you to hear in the spirit, to hear him clearly, is because he wants you to be a blessing to the nation. And if he sends you on a message once, you refuse. He sends you the second time, you refuse. The third time, he won't speak to you anymore. Because he would have, in fact, as he's speaking to you, he's preparing the mind of someone else for the same message. Mm. <laughs> That's how, how, how fantastic is it. First Corinthians chapter 14, uh, 14 to 16, amplifier means kononia, which we are talking about, which is fellowship. Please read that on your own time. Then First Corinthians 14, 4 again it says, The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself. Edification. Edification. He edifies himself. That is what it simply means. But the one who prophesies builds up the church. So it's actually better for us to actually speak in the spirit than start prophesying in the church. Because by you prophesying to church, you are only building up the church. But when you speak in the spirit from your heart, not from your lips, you are building up yourself to be able to hear from him so that your ear can be in his heart and he can speak to you. Jude chapter 20 says, Jude 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. What is our expectation when we pray a prayer of edification properly and we stand in a place of edification when we are edified? Number one, God does most of the talking. Hello? Mm-hmm. You know, when we go to God, we go with our list and we start saying this and we start saying this. In fact, some of us can't pray now apart from repeat after me. Say after me, my father, my father. That is the only time you can pray. When we say, okay, turn that into your prayer, you just hear people quiet. You need, as a prayer warrior, as a prayer team, we need to go beyond ordinary when people are waiting for pastor to start repeating and they repeat after pastor before they know what to pray about. When you say that scripture alone, turn it into a prayer, you are ready to fire. And then when you are doing prayer of edification, edifying, God is the one that does most of the talking. Yours is to just say, I am available. Amen. Purify me. Amen. Edify me. Use me. Amen. Take every rubbish away. And then we start talking. And that is a place you go mm. with three things. You go with your Bible. Because he could speak to you through his word. You go with your pen. It doesn't take rubbish. He wants you to write it down. And you go with your jotter. Or journal. To be able to write things down. You don't go with your phone. You don't go with your tablet. You don't go with your with your uh, computer, laptop. No. Those are distractions. And if I is this generation distract. <laughs> Honestly. Some people cannot live without their phone. Some, if they forget anything, money at home, they are okay. But if they forget their mobile phone, they go back. They go back. I must have it with me. There are three things you take to that uh, God presence. Your pen, your Bible, and your journal or jotter, whichever one. Three things. And then he does most of the talking. Yours is just say, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. I am here. Edify me. Take rubbish away. Change my heart. Change my. Just simple, simple prayer. Not I will not go into the market to go and buy. Number two, he will disclose a lot of his mind and make some gray areas in your understanding of him clearer. When you do this kind of prayer and you do it properly. Number two thing that will always happen to you is God will always speak to you. He will disclose a lot of his mind. And gray area, what do I mean by gray area? The area that you don't understand. Either he gives you a vision and you don't understand. It will make it clearer and you'll be able to understand him. And then you'll be able to know when God is speaking. 
Our father in the Lord in America, we were made, um, I had the opportunity to minister to him. I used this a lot of time, not for anything. But after he has given word, giving word, all of a sudden we saw him taking his shoes off, taking his socks off, and he was walking barefooted on a dirty place. He said, God said, if I give you this kind of uh, information, am I ready to obey him? And he asked me to take off my shoes, and I did. If it's someone that say, ah, ah, me, oh, with thousands of people that I can I can't even see their faces, just the, the color of the head or the hair of the head. That's all I can see. Take shoe of devil get deep behind me. In, in prayer of edification, you will have understanding of him. You will know his fragrance. Mm-hmm. You when he's talking to you, you are not going to say, Devil, get deep behind me, because you will know it's him. Amen. You will know it's him. We come down in Shekinah glory. Any question? Any question? We want to pray, please. Any question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it possible that even when you are in his presence, at that point in time, God might not answer that day, maybe a, another day, or when you sleep? Edification is not an answered uh, prayer session. No, 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 no. You don't get what I'm saying. Like when you go and then God speaks to you, does it God will necessarily speak at that point in time? No, not necessarily. Okay. It uses circumstances to speak. You need to understand how God speaks. It doesn't speak immediately sometimes. Sometimes you'll be watching TV and it will speak. A brother left his house and he was going to query about um, tight in the church. So he went to the pastor. And he entered into the pastor's house. He has prayed. God didn't answer him. So he said, let me go and talk to my pastor about tight. I just want to have understanding. And when he got him, there's another brother that was giving testimony of tithing to pastor. I said, oh, brother, come in, come in, come in. Come in. Uh, 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 Pastor, uh, brother, Timothy was just telling me about what God did as a result of obedience or paying tithe and everything. God uses that to answer him straight away. Sometimes you may be watching TV and you just drop a word. But you have to be sensitive enough to know that God is now answering what you have prayed about or what you have prayed concerning. Yes, ma'am. No, okay. Amen. Or, uh, uh, Baba, please, you can add to it if there's any. No, that's fine. Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Concerning the speaking in tongues, I, I, when, I'm spe- when I'm speaking in tongues, for all this, I say, is, there, is it I'm playing with this? Is it, is it, is it God hearing me? Is it, is it okay? Is am, it I, okay? Am, I, am I being am religious? I, am I is God hearing me? Of it? Is it? Oh, let me stop like this. Because I'm speaking in tongues is more... And you feel it's too much? Let me just stop. I'm playing with with my tongue or with my anything. It's not uh, right. No, ma. No, ma. Whoever speaks in tongues edifies himself. In fact, actually, I prefer to pray in the spirit more than my understanding. Because I... The word edifies, sorry, please. The word edifies simply means building. Be building. building. So you are building yourself from up. the word edify that we get edifice. Mm-hmm. And this is an edifice. And to build an edifice, you put block upon mm-hmm. block. And then you plaster it. And the beauty show. Mm-hmm. And in the same way, God is building us. One of the ways is building us is what he has mentioned, which is praying in your supernatural language. Tongues is a supernatural language. And so the more you do that, you are, you know, building up yourself. It's a muscle. You are building building up up your muscle. Your spiritual muscle is like you are in the gym, the spiritual gym. Many people today go to gym. They have different reasons of going to gym. Some want to build up their muscle. Some want to tone up, you know, their, the muscle in the stomach. Some want to reduce weight and so many other things like that. Okay? But for us, spiritually, when we go to the spiritual gym, we want to build up our spiritual 
muscle, you know, to become a macho person. So that when there is a situation that comes, the muscle that we have built up will be able to use it to meet the situation. So you are, you, you, there is a match. You can tell the devil, you are no match for me because of the energy. The energy will come from within. What he was explaining before, it will not be a mechanical tongue. Mm -hmm. Some of us, what we do is shukuloko bangoshi. You know, all the time we are praying is pekam, 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 pekam. The same word, the same supernatural syllables. word. The same supernatural word. But what Jesus said is, you will speak in tongues. Plural. So the more you do that, the more energy you have. Uh, some guys, you know, challenged themselves one day. I said, friends, we've been praying for six hours. Today we're going to pray for 18 hours. In that supernatural language. Praying in tongues. And of course, immediately there was a transformation. But beyond that, they could begin to see the ripples upon their ministry. There are ministers today in Nigeria that you hear about, but many people don't know that they developed themselves privately mm. before coming out publicly. Yes. And that is the building, that is the edification that he's talking about. So the more you do that, the better for you. Of course, what you are saying, you don't understand it. Mm. Mm. So that is what is puzzling you. Exactly. That I don't understand That's what I'm saying, but it is in the spirit that you are speaking mysteries. What is a mystery? Mystery is divine hidden secrets. Secret. Divine hidden secret. secrets that is not known to man, but is known to God. And so the more of that you do, the more mysteries you are speaking to God. And in the process, you will now begin to bring things to your understanding. So, the more you give yourself to it, the better for you. Amen. I, ho I hope you, you now have a... You see, and uh, let me just buttress one example. You call me on a particular Sunday one day, and then you ask for somebody's identity, and say, can I ask, how did you, or how did God reveal that to you? It's as a result of you fellowshipping with him. That's why I said the problem with this one is because of his name. And I gave you go ahead to ask him, and he gave you the information you needed. You remember very well. Mm -hmm. Aha. So that is as a result of your um, fellowshipping with God. That's why you are able to get that and do that. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. But Tadia also has explained Exp some things, part of the question I want to ask. Because I discovered that when I'm praying in the spirit, sometimes I say like it's like I'm conscious of what I'm saying, which is not supposed to be. Is it? No. Because That's I think it. like sir, let me let me say so that you can give me full explanation. When I'm praying like like I'm praying like it's like I'm saying the same thing. I see the same thing for a while. Then the thing keeps changing and changing. Mm -hmm. And when it goes up, and it's like what am I saying? So I start having that kind of is this Doubt. right? Because you know what is coming out is like just it's, it's not right. That's okay. what keeps coming to my mind. So for that reason, I might want to like pause and mm -hmm. pray in my understanding that mm -hmm. I don't think. But you know, this I will still go back and then I'll be wondering, what is this? What is this? Is, is this part? Is this a tongue or am I just saying rubbish? That's okay. true. Well, I feel it, it, you you go back and read that First Corinthians chapter fourteen again. Okay. And with read that, it with different versions uh, of the Bible. When, when you when you read First Corinthians chapter fourteen, where Paul was explaining the operations of the giftings, mm -hmm. then you will have a better understanding.
But suffice to say that you might be repeating a word. It is for emphasis. For instance, when you say jibbe, jibbe, mege de gebe, jibbe, jibbe, ini mege de godogo, jibbe, jibbe, you are hitting something you may not know. Do you understand? The Holy Spirit is inspiring you to bring up the same word. And it is in the scripture, Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament, mene, mene. But it is deep. I won't go into that. Then, in the New Testament, Elohi, Elohi. Lama Sabakhtani. He was speaking a supernatural language. And said, My God, my God, Elohim, my God, Elohim, my God, Lama Sabakhtani, why hast thou forsaken me? Why the repetition? For emphasis. Oh, very, very. To, to bring in a weight, to put a weight. Behind what you are saying. So, it's not that you are speaking rubbish. Do you understand? So, again, let me just lay a fast in one area that I think he hasn't, that hasn't touched. You said that you are comfortable with a, a certain syllable and all of a sudden you go higher and you start speaking something else. So, you want to come back to what you normally speak. No, 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 no. I'm like... It's different, but... It's, uh, okay. It's, it's, you see, the difference in, in this is this. When you start in school, you start with primary one. Then you get promoted to primary two. It's the same thing in the spirit. I, can rem- I still remember how I started speaking in tongues, and I know where I am, and I still want to cl- continue to climb because people are climbing higher and higher and higher. And as you climb higher, it redefines your language. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. It redefines your... So don't be afraid. Don't let the uh, devil um, um, such as you. Uh, no, don't such change. Such change you. That's what I'm looking for. Such change you of your blessing. Okay? That is the reason why we are here today. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's something I experience every now and again. And sometimes it gives me worry. For I can list an example like this room now. I've not been to this room before. This is my first day. But when I now come into places like that, my mind is like, I've been here before. Not in walking in, but I could see it looks familiar. But in my mind, I'm like, am I thinking right or am I getting it right? But I'm worried like it looks familiar. I've seen it before, but I've not actually walked in with my legs. Mm-hmm. And I'm beginning to look around like, when it looks familiar, there's something familiar. And I think just say, look at God. Take control, but sometimes it's worrying, and I keep wondering that how could I have been there without me being there, walking in there, or see something. I'm like, this thing is familiar, I've seen it before, I've seen it somewhere, but I cannot place. (laughs) That's what the people of the world call it, they call it deja vu. That's in the world, in the occultism, actually. When they change something, when they bring something that looks familiar, but in Christendom. There are two ways to handle it. I will maybe let Baba hear me, and I know that you will do the correction if I didn't give you the right answer. There are two ways to handle it: is to actually pray and ask God what He wants you to see or know. If I, if that kind of thing happens to me, I always ask, "Am I in danger?" When God bring me, when I enter a place and I can, I feel that I feel that I've been here before, but I can't trace it. And I start thinking, I can't. Tra- the first question I ask God is, God, am I in danger? Is there anything I need to watch out for? If I find myself in that kind of situation and it's a hall like this, there's possibility that that day you won't see me drinking or eating in that hall. You understand? Just to buttress what was it called, because I have that self encounter. Sister Kumbi is sitting here, she would remember that I told you the first guy. And God will always show you things. 
as Christians. He shows things before they come to full manifestation. And it's for us, you know, this, this issue about journaling, yeah, journaling things down when God brings revelation to us. It's a part of revelation that the first day I saw the guy, what did I say to you? I said, uh -uh, mm. I have seen this scenario. And the scenario is not good because the moment I have those situations, I write them down. So when I come into that place, I ask the Holy Spirit bring to my remembrance what you've shown me before now. Um, and it's always, uh, she will tell you, it's helped her on her death journey of life. And same thing with uh, the times when we bring things, bring situations, bring things back to you because one wants to get ahead of it. And when you get there, you know the assignment you need to do to there when it fully comes. There's no place I find myself. No place I found myself that I've not seen in the spirit before. Before I get to that place, so I will tell. I'm gonna tell you that I've seen you before. I know you from somewhere, and the minute the spirit begin to bring me, if it's things I need to be cautious of, it makes me be cautious. And if the things that he needs me to do at that moment, I think I'm easily able to rise up and stand in the gap in the position to do what God wants me to do. All right, I, I, would, I, I would quickly share this. I've already sh um, ah. about seven minutes into Baba's time. Um, I, I, this is better than us praying without understanding. I, I, think, I think this is better. I'm sorry, Baba, what do you think? There's no point in us just blah, 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 and then we all go home the same. No, but now you have a better understanding. Let me share, quickly share this. When I was in Nigeria, and uh, waiting to come over to come and join my wife. I had a dream. Then I was doing a prayer between the hour of 12 to 2 every day. And two months or six weeks into that prayer, I had a dream. I saw myself among white. And then among that white is like a, it's like a beautiful garden with flowers and everybody. And everybody there, I happen to be the only uh, black guy. And somebody just came with a, let, a brand envelope and gave it to me. So before I could open the envelope, I woke up. And I didn't say anything. I didn't share it with anybody. And I slept. Then my brother traveled. I think he went to Abuja Piles. He went to Abuja. And then in Abu... No, he went to Lagos. So from Lagos, he had a dream. And he saw a, he saw a brown envelope with me. And then he, he, he started dancing. They gave him a brown envelope. So he started grand, uh, um, rejoicing. I have my own. He has his own. But then he, he sang from the... Dream into the word. Motiba letter. In fact, that was the song. Motiba letter. And immediately he came to me and I said, Your visa will come. That was the week. That weekend was when I received got my visa. Does that make sense? So sometimes God speaks to us mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he brings us into a situation. But please, because devil is a bad devil, mm -hmm. he can adulterate, which means copy what God wants to say to you. That is why you need to exercise caution at the same time, allow God to move. I hope you are, you are blessed with this session. Yes. I know we didn't pray. We are meant to pray. But intentionally, I just felt we have been doing so many prayers. But it is high time for us to actually talk and ask questions. If you have further questions or any more questions on this, in our meetings, maybe one Monday, we can uh, dig deep further. Okay, so that we time for questions. And uh, there more so there's time for question in the in the something as well. God bless you. Thank you very much for having me. God bless.